What is happening, barbecue fans? Welcome to another episode of Cribs and Ribs with Steve Wickett. Today we're standing outside John Moles Meats in North Las Vegas. And this is a barbecue institution here in the Las Vegas Valley. Just ask Google. But it's a full service butcher shop as well as a barbecue joint. They've got a line for days back there, but I'm gonna take you in and show you the spot and uh, we'll try some of this food. This is tucked into a nice little residential neighborhood here in North Las Vegas. But at John Moles Meats, they have a butcher shop, full service butcher shop, where you can pretty much get any of the cuts, any of the offals, as well as a barbecue joint right here in the back. But as you walk in as with me here, you'll be able to see it's a very popular place here. And again, I've heard nothing but the best about this, so I'm really excited to try it. I'm meeting my cousin Brian for lunch here. Brian's my barbecue partner in crime, or he definitely knows his barbecue cuisine as well. So uh, let's go in here before he gets here, and we'll take a preview of the joint. As you first walk in, kind of has that old country sort of appeal to it. But you can get a look at the place over here behind me. As you can see, you know, there's a lot of cars in the parking lot. A lot of happy diners eating here. And the line is out the door to actually get your food. Well, let's walk up and take a peek. All right. Roadkill Grill. Famous to Las Vegas here, everybody. All right. So as you can see, people line up for this uh, John Moles here, everybody. I definitely recommend you come down here and give this place a shot. All right, everybody. Finally made it to the front of the line after about 25 minutes. Lunch break's almost over. <laughs> Me and my cousin Brian, we're going to show you what we got here in just a second and then take you through the tour. Everybody, let's take a look at these plates. So here's what Brian got, everybody. He's got the, uh, the beans that you find up on the top right. Top left, we've got some collard greens. He's got the bird ends on the recommendation of the employees, as well as the chopped hot links. And as you can see, we are looking at some pretty good sized portions. They handed this, both of these plates to me in a bag. I thought I was lifting weights for the morning. For my plate here, I got dark meat chicken. You know me, I got some brisket and I've also got the burn ends. I've got collard greens and I heard the mac and cheese was to die for. And I will let you all know in just a moment. Let's see what we have here, everybody. Right. So this is one of those burn ends. He said they're famous for these. Look at that. You can definitely see some smoke along the outsides of that. Let's give it a taste. I don't think these are burn ends. I think these are rib tips. Yeah, yeah, they give me rib tips. I want to burn ends. I'm gonna have to go back in and beat their ass. Ready to go. I'm gonna have to take this back. I want to try those front ends. <laughs> rib tips are amazing. These are those rib tips, everybody. Nice and charred on the outside, plenty of meat on these. Mm. You can tell by the color that the smoke definitely did its job. And these have some nice chew to them, but they're still very tender. It comes off the bone nice and easy. Let's try it with some of this barbecue sauce. The darker one's mild, the other one's spicy. These are house-made barbecue sauces. No special names to them, they just have mild and spicy. Which one do you like so far, Brian? That's spicy. No shock there, right? <laughs> All right, let's try some sauce. Oh, 
although the mild does taste good too. Mm. The spicy sauce is good. It's not real spicy, but it's almost, it's got a certain flavor to it. It almost tastes like they make it with beer. And I don't know whether they do or not, but it's delicious. It's definitely got a unique flavor that you're not gonna get from anything that's coming out of a bottle. Very good job there, John Moe. Mm. All right. Although I would have liked for them to put a little bit more rub on the rib tips, but otherwise they are pretty good. Yeah, they've got a nice flavor. Okay, here's the brisket. Brisket was a little tough to pull apart. Yeah, already, I haven't tasted it yet, but I'm already thinking this isn't gonna be my favorite brisket that I've ever had. It's brown all the way through. There's no visible smoke ring at all, but let's taste it and see. So the brisket pretty much tastes how it looks. It's chewy, it's not smoky, it's edible. I don't wanna give you the wrong impression. It's edible brisket, but it's by no means good brisket. Sorry, John Mole, you lost me there. But the rib tips have been excellent and the sauces are real good. Here's that smoked chicken. Now I think we're getting back to business. The color seems to be just right. The skin's nice and thin. Pull it apart easily. We'll see how that tastes. I'm gonna try this in a mile. Mm. Tom Moore bringing it back with the chicken. Mm. Chicken's good. It's nice and tender. It's got a little bit of a chew to it. You definitely know you're eating chicken. Whoops. Not that piece though. <laughs> Brian is my cousin here. He's actually my barbecue partner in crime. We've got an event coming up tomorrow. We do, uh, we do it up big for the NFL draft every year. So we're gonna be bringing you some more content tomorrow where we're gonna be smoking some tri-tips and we're gonna make another little concoction that I haven't quite named just yet, but I'll get that out to you tomorrow. We're gonna to be doing a mock draft too. <clears throat> Probably should have asked some questions to find out if these are like a house ground sausage, but this is a, a full service butcher shop, so I can't imagine they're going to be bringing in sausage. Mm. Hot leg's good. Skin's got a nice pop to it. It's not overly spicy. It's got a little kick, so you know you're eating a hot leg instead of a regular old sausage, but. I like it too. Thumbs up on the hot link, John Moore. Try this brisket, man. Get you a slice of that. Then tell me I'm not mistaken there. Yeah, it's not supposed to be like that. You can't see any smoke ring, and there's no real flavor to it. Plus, not to mention, when I was watching them serve this brisket, they had the brisket already thinly sliced and floating around in some sort of a liquid. Which you're not supposed to do. Yeah, it just kind of seemed like bad policy, John. Sorry, buddy. But everything else has been delicious. John's probably like, this dude doesn't run a barbecue business. Please you talk shit when you don't have to worry about your own. For some reason, John sounds like Hank Hill inside of my head. Well, I mean, I was a kitchen manager for a barbecue joint, so. That's not how we kept ours. Slice the door. Turn up your business. You know what I mean? How long does it take to go? A few times. Don't be, 
let it sit there and liquid man it and, you know, and it just should bake in the brisket. That's why it's brown, because it's sitting there cooking. Yeah, it's overcooked. Get your uh, spoon out there, man, and try these beans. All right, I'm looking forward to trying these. Hey, buddy, the beans are supposed to be outstanding. I'm Brian's word. I'm going to have to go ahead and try it. Yeah. It's a nice, nice size good too. All right. Yes, yeah, so this has got some meat in it. You can see caramelized onion in there. Let me see if I can get this up close without getting my clothes all messed up. I don't know how well you can see that, but it's got some nice caramelized onion, very saucy little pieces of meat in there. Spot on beans. Some of the best beans I've ever had. The texture is fantastic. The beans are a little on the soft side, and then you get that chewiness of the meat. Really spectacular combination there. Beans are top notch. Now for the collard greens. All right. I want you to see these collard greens, everybody. Look at that. There's no canned collard greens here. These are real deal. See how these taste. Mm. <laughs> collard greens, the collard greens are seasoned just right. They're cooked just right, so they're not too soft. They're not too firm. Mm. Those are great collard greens. So the sides, and I've already tried the mac and cheese, but let me show you this mac and cheese here, everybody. It just comes out in big cheesy chunks. I mean, this, look at that, that's some down home style mac and cheese right there. And it is excellent. It's got a nice creamy texture to it. You know, and again, the pasta isn't overcooked. I definitely recommend these as well. Mm. So, so on the three different sides that I've tried here, all three sides were, were definitely legit. They're all three delicious. Uh, the textures were just right, the flavors were just right. You know, so you get an A plus on the sides there, John. The rib tips are delicious. The uh, the smoked chicken's pretty good, and I really like that hot link too. The only downside is just bad brisket. Not even just not good brisket, but bad brisket. I mean, it's edible. You know, if you if you ate it on a sandwich, you probably still wouldn't think it was that great. You know, but but uh, but it's edible. You know, that's good as I can get on it. <laughs> but everything else has been delicious. Like really, really, you know, authentic and delicious and you can really taste that they take their time and, and make this stuff from scratch. Now I'm gonna quit talking and put in some work on this plate. You're more than welcome to skip to the end or hang with us while we pack this down, everybody. <laughs> Brian had to get back to work. That's one thing I like about my job is I'm still at work. But just to give you a recap, so we had the, the dark meat chicken, the collard greens, the mac and cheese, we had the rib tips, and we had the brisket. I've got two different kinds of sauces. They got a mild and a spicy. Everything has been outstanding except for the brisket. Brisket was a huge letdown. But everything else has been delicious especially the sides. I was pleasantly surprised by the, by the quality and frankly by the portion size as well. I think two people could split a, a three item lunch here easily. 
Again, you can see these, this chunky mac and cheese is really just wonderful. The collard greens, I can't say enough about those. Really a great barbecue place. And then I got a good look at their butcher shop too. You can pretty much get anything you want in there. I'm about to go in there and buy some beef cheeks so I can cook those up in me and Brian's draft event. So I definitely give this place a, a thumbs up. Just avoid that brisket, everybody. Thanks for tuning in to another episode of Cribs and Ribs, everybody. Don't forget to like and subscribe and ring that bell. You don't want to miss anything spicy.